right, he's back. Back again. Guess who's back? Actually, I shouldn't be singing that. I should be singing. Well, he'll probably sue you. You know, he's suing the Reasonably Shady podcast, which is our women from Potomac. I'm not sure if you're familiar, but Giselle and Robin... From they deserve husband. to be sued, so, so probably. Wow. But how about they actually just won? By the way. Well. He was trying to get them not to use the word shady. It's like, dude, come on. Well, perhaps we should start with a different ballad, which is "I'm just Ken, anywhere else I'd be a ten. Okay. Well, we're joining today because you are joining today because you have a hard on for Ryan Gosling. I mean, it's the not, biggest let's male not crush. Say oh. it's a hard. Okay, arm. please. Oh my God, are you kidding? You wouldn't leave me for Ryan Gosling. Possibly. Of course you would. We, you're on because people. I don't know if people know this about you, but you are a pop culture aficionado. You love film. Just as a you quick pause. Television. Just as a quick pause. What? Not to tell you how to do your podcast, but you didn't introduce me to the audience. <sighs> All right, Dan. Every man, everyone knows you, and they read the description. Okay. This is my husband, Schman. Fine. You want a, pr- a proper intro? Schman is joining. He's my husband. It's great, it's great to be back. Thanks for having me. Of nearly five years. Ugh. Maybe it'll be our last. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe fifth. We'll do it. Please keep playing these cards. We'll see. <laughs> oh, please. Where are you going? Except for Ryan Gosling. Mm-hmm. So you're on today for a couple of things. We have to do an Oscars recap because... I don't know if I'm unwell or what, but I actually thought it was a great Oscars. I enjoyed it. Me too. And usually I hate these shows, but I loved it. I were biased in one sense that being on the West Coast, the show airs at four. Mm -hmm. So uh, like the early start for people on the East Coast, I'm sure was appreciated too, because I I don't, I can't stay up for that stuff, but it was great. We watched it at four o'clock and I think it finished at like seven, seven, seven 30. It was awesome. Um, but it was, I thought I enjoyed the broadcast. I'm, uh, I like Jimmy Kimmel. I do too. Um, I love Jimmy. I thought, you know, there were some odd moments, but also some pretty funny moments. And, um, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's the, uh, John Cena was hysterical. It's the night where, uh, stars from the silver screen light up the Hollywood sky, right? (laughs) Is that the expression? Something like that? Okay. It was such a good night. All right, we're going to get into that. Plus, you've got thoughts on the Kate Middleton uh, Photoshop conspiracy. And where is Kate Middleton? I'll tell you what's going I know exactly what's well, going on. Well, it sounds like you have thoughts. But I do. On, okay? I'll tell you exactly what's going on. And also, um, we have a email. We have some feedback about Schman on the show. So I'm going to read that. Can't and, wait. And uh, this gentleman has some questions for you. Okay. Um, first, I want to address, though, you know you've been following along with this. Normally on Mondays, I do something Sister Wives related almost religiously. Mm-hmm. But I just felt, and I don't know how much you followed this, a little because I've kept you. You, you kept me in the loop. But I just thought everyone needed a, a pause. Today, I was getting ready to epi- to review season one, episode five, which is the first wife has a 20th anniversary with Cody. Mm-hmm. It's a very deep, emotional episode, kind of lighthearted. But... You know, I covered so much last week with the unexpected suicide of their son, Garrison, at 25. I just thought everybody needed a pause. And it was sort of like jumping right back into reviewing, uh, you know, the show from the beginning. I don't know. Am I being overly no, sensitive? It just I, there, it seems there are, like a lot. There, there is a – when you are in the spotlight, you know, you there are benefits and, and detriments, right? And – there is some belief in our mind, and I don't know whether it's like um, a jealousness or or what, that if someone is in the spotlight, like you, there is a lack of humanity for them. And and one of the things mm. that was happening in sports recently, and it's happening a lot actually, are fans who are heckling people, like and they're crossing the line. And so um, <clears throat> the Detroit Pistons general manager, who you know is not doing a very good job, and you know is is should be criticized for what he's doing. There was uh he got into it with a fan during a Pistons game recently and the fan apparently was shouting things at him, insults, maybe not sub, I don't know if it was obscenities, but insults at him and then finally after the third time like the GM started yelling back at him like I'm going to kick your ass and then had security escort him out, right? And she, sure everyone can have their opinions, but like this guy's sitting at the game, he's watching his team play like does, Wait, do you think it's really less civil? 
I mean, come on. I'm from New England. You know Boston. Boston people are the worst. Sure. Well, no. Philadelphia I, people. You, do you think really it's it's worse today than it yes. was in Larry Bird and Michael Jordan's I, day? I think it is because I think part of it is access and social media. Um, oh, well, that's so you have you have people who are more online and more connected, um, but at the same time, you know, like. It, when Larry Bird was playing and someone was heckling him or Jordan was playing, you know, it's just someone at the, in the stands. They're not like, tri- you know, tweeting them at, uh, or, or, or messaging them or, um, but I, I think there's a lack of civility at times. And, you know, in this case, yeah, this family has suffered a tragedy. Let's give them some room. So well, I, mean, I did, I did like three podcasts. I did that. Like I did podcasts about them well, all week you know, last week. I mean, I, you know, I got some people, of that feedback. People, people want to know about what's going on, right? That's it. You're in the news. There's a fine line to it. Well, I followed this family for two years. I thought it's awkward to not address sure. this horrible thing that's going on. Mm-hmm. People have followed me on the podcast specifically to talk about this family. So it is hard to find a balance of yeah. being res- ex- respectful and not exploitative toward them. Um well, but you, it's you, hard. Go, you I mean, go all in, and then people are going to trash you for it, and then you ignore it, and people are going to trash you for it, and then you go in the middle to try to find a compromise or a balance, and both sides are going to trash you for it. So, you know. You're, oh, I, I mean, I'm used to it. I don't care at all. Okay. I don't care at all. I'd put us on reality TV in a heartbeat. Are you kidding? I wouldn't care. It's just, it's the kids are like the old, that's the thing. Yeah, I agree. Like, KJ's the love of our lives. I can't, you know, I just, once he like, once he says he's all in and he doesn't care and he's going to be a soccer star and he loves the heckle, like bring it. And mm-hmm. I'll heckle the fans right back. I'll be that bitch mom and I'll flash my Going tits. Going to be? Wow. I'll flash my tits. Hey, you, you loser. Look at these. I'm not sure how huh? defending our suck, son. Suck mom. And you, you know? exposing yourself publicly are go hand in oh, hand. Oh, I'm going to be hot. I'm going to be hot as I get older. After I have our next child, mm-hmm. look, you better step back. Start making some down payments on plastic surgery, <laughs> different re- yes. rejuvenization treatments. Okay. Yes. All right. So I'm, I'm, I'm just, I just, I watched that episode of Sister Wives. I was going to jump right in and do the review, but I thought, let's just give it one more. I did a lot last week okay. and uh, I feel like I just need a second. So. We all, can take, we, can all, we can all take a breather. So that's why you're here as well. Let's talk about the Oscars 2024 last night. I agree. Jimmy Kimmel as the host was great. Tell me what you liked, what you didn't like. Um, I like Jimmy Kimmel. I think he's funny. Me too. Um, I like John Mulaney. I know you don't care for him, but I think John Mulaney is funny. I think last night was an audition for him to host next year's Oscars. Oh, fantastic. Oh, okay. Um, I didn't think about that. That's a good... I think he... You know, he's... his addiction has worked well for him, you know, in the <laughs> sense of in the sense of being able to recover and now make jokes about it and uh, be able to move on with his life. He's I, I I find him to be a very funny human being. I I I thought he was funny from the first time I saw him do a guest spot on SNL as a writer on Weekend Update. I I'm a big fan. We've seen him live a couple times. Um, but I couldn't even tell you. I, it wasn't that memorable. I couldn't tell you one thing he said. He comes out and does this old timey voice or something. That's all I remember. There you go. Well, that's half of it. Uh, I thought he was good. There was, um, I mean, we'll we'll talk about I'm just Ken in a moment because that possibly was the one of I can't think of a bigger spectacle in Oscars history than that. Like how uh, just um, just perfect that performance was, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But, and he's cool as a cucumber, isn't he? Like, there's Ryan Gosling gets not, he does not get enough flowers. I, he doesn't get enough credit. I and he was said just, this morning to you that while I am a big Paul Rudd fan, mm-hmm. um, I might be more gay for Ryan Gosling than I am for Paul Rudd, at least right now. I was just blown away by the talent. He's he, so he's incredibly talented. talented. And you know, he's just like I think sometimes you can tell when they're a bit nervous mm-hmm. in front of their peers, you know, because you are looking at the best of sure. the best in the world, right? That dude, he, he sat behind Margot. He just just like, knocked it out of the know, park. He just like you're like, okay, this man is He had he's Steven got it. Spielberg on his feet clapping along. I mean, like that Oh, I mean, can you, you, how is it so hard to impress Steven Spielberg? He, so Ryan Gosling is an incredible talent. He's an actor. He's a, a, a performer. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he has comedy chops. 
Um, he has ac action hero chops. I mean, the guy the guy is incredible. And the you know you had uh, I you know like keep going. What I find I what I find like I don't want to say it's ironic, right? But it is ironic or or or, or perhaps noteworthy is that in, for a film that made a billion dollars that mm -hmm. was about women, women empowerment, um, the complicated relationship between Barbie and women, right? All these things that were female centric. Ryan Gosling and I'm just kind a of stole man a show. steals the show. Just stole yeah, the show. Like, that's horrible. Completely stole a show. That goes to show you what about women. Well, I mean, to be fair, the, one of the benefits about like a film like Barbie is that you can pay the writer, director, star thirty percent less than than everyone else. I mean, it's a, just so an, it's economics, so that's a positive. <laughs> I think women now make. Uh, Very close, if not more, to no. Women. It's a, it's a math joke. I, you know, just it, you use that one all the time. This is, like a, this is like oh, a John a Mulaney one. act. It's I mean, a good it's one. A, no, it's, um, it's terrible. But that performance was epic. Yet slash under which which also people didn't realize that Wolf, uh, Wolfgang Wolfgang Van Halen. Eddie Van Halen's son was yeah. the other guitarist on there. Mark Ronson was on it on on stage. Like you had three of the three of the best guitar players out there backing him up. You had the whole cast doing the the, the dance and celebration. I mean, it was um, phenomenal. So kudos to him. He's got a movie coming out uh, that's based on the '80s show, The Fall Guy. I'll go see it because I like '80s shows and. Uh, Ryan Gosling is awesome. And what I love about him is he seems to be, first of all, and I know I'm sure he's done an interview about this, but he was a Disney star mm -hmm. along with Justin Timberlake and Britney Spears. But yet he's, I mean, Justin Timberlake seems like he's survived it well. And Christina Aguilera. How would Britney do? All right. Well, that, okay. that's right. I mean, that's like sad, like yeah. what she went through. So, but he seems to have weathered that I, I think in an he, incredible way. I think he probably had a pathway where he could have gone more musical. And instead, he went more acting, and he he seems, you know, I'm sure all of these celebrities are whack jobs behind the scenes, uh, to some degree, right? They all have neuroses. They all they all have addictions. They all when I say addictions, not necessarily drugs. They all have they all have vices. They all have neuroses. Um, but he just seems to be. I mean, like he brought his, I think, his sister and his mom to the show. Um, he just seems to be like a normal and a good husband. Yeah. Yes, like he's so supportive of his wife, yep. and and you know you don't hear a lot of stories of him out and about. I mean, no, I agree. I agree. Yeah. So he stole the show, but uh, I I enjoyed it. You know, they there were, uh, you know, I'm not like there's a couple foreign language films that I guess we have to watch now. Um, oh, which ones are the Anatomy well, of a Fall? Anatomy of a Fall, and then the one about the. Um, the uh, people who live next to Auschwitz. I, I'm not eager to watch that film. But, oh, I know. It's so um, sad. I know. I just it, that, I agree. that one looks r just brutal. It bothers and then, me so. I and know. And then, uh, of course, I also want to watch Godzilla Minus One, but that's not on streaming yet. So. I, don't, I don't even know. Um, what did you, did you like? Because a lot of people are calling for it every year now. Um, did you like the presenters, the like five presenters that, that, Sort of speak to the yeah, nominee. I, I think so. Or you don't, yeah. No, I, I do. I think that provides some continuity, a little bit of history, right? Where you have different people presenting. You've always had, I think, and I correct, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I always thought the person who's presenting the award is the person who won the previous year, like to some degree. Um, so, like Michelle Yao uh, presented, you know, was the one who uh, presented the best actress. Uh, to Emma Stone. To Emma Stone, okay, right? Okay. So, but to have the different nominees to show, and because sometimes you have people who win and you're like, oh yeah, I didn't realize this person won an Academy Award. Um, it's a little um, pretentious, like, you know, the... We're all here, you know, yeah, so we're all a part of this very elite Your, your performance did this and that, and your, the way you're smart, your smart, your farts smell are... Yeah, but if you uh, hung like out with roses. actors, that's how they are. Oh, correct. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's what, uh, that's what the Oscars is all about, is, Cabo, is smelling each other's farts. So, they love that. Um, but then, of course, there's always these things like um, you read afterward <laughs> about, you know, oh... Robert Downey Jr. slighted the, you know, the guy um, um, who played Data in, in a short run. I can't remember his name. He won the uh, best act, best supporting actor last year. Um, uh, um, I can't remember his name. But uh, he, uh, like, because Robert Downey Jr. like didn't look at him when he grabbed the the the, the statue, or Emma Stone's uh, was getting ripped because um, she was at the bar during all the production awards where all of her. Um, 
all the people from um, uh, the film she was in won production um, awards. What was it? Poor Little Things? Poor Things. Poor yeah. Things. Ugh. Ugh. Which you were horrible. Kind of oh my God. So foolish. Well, and we he, only got like 30 minutes into uh, it. But. Because I turned it off. Mm-hmm. Uh, bore. I'm, but awful. all this stuff, all this stuff is like just like it's an award. So you do take yourself seriously. But at the same time, it's, 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 it's over the top. I had hope, like I, my faith is restored in the Oscars though, because Oppenheimer won yes. best picture, mm-hmm. you know, best actor. It was, it was and, good. And Oppenheimer is so good. Mm-hmm. I mean, on like that to me is what I want in a film. Yeah. It makes you think you connect with like these human, de- I mean, they had this horrible decision that they had to make. I mean, but yet they were brilliant. I mean, I don't even know if our government. Chris, Chris could... Nolan is an incredible oh, writer, mean... director. He, he, I'm glad he won. He deserves it. And you know, I'm not a fan of like recognizing people for, previous achievements because all these awards are sing- singular but he, he, despite all of his previous su- success you know like singularly Oppenheimer was the best film oh my god I mean and to do to do Batman mm-hmm. and make Batman Christopher Nolan did that I mean yep. I actually found that series compelling there you go I mean and, and because Batman made you think like Obviously, Batman's fake. You know, it's not a real, you know. He's real to me. <laughs> well, yeah, in your mind, I'm yeah. sure you pretended you were Batman numerous times. But, you know, I mean, it's, but he actually made this kind of stupid thing yeah. really deep. Correct. He rooted it in, he rooted it in reality. In human nature. I yep. was like, okay, I'm into this. This is fascinating. My only gripe with awards season. What? Is that. I find, and, and and you can make the argument, the counter argument that Emma Stone was recognized for it, because Poor Things, it's not quite a comedy, right? There, It's a drama, but yeah. there are some comedic, you know, uh, just ridiculous elements to it. But comedic performances, I think, like a good, believable comedic performance, I think is more impressive than a dramatic performance in terms of acting ability, right? Mm-hmm. So you have, because... I just feel like you and everyone is just natural, right? You put more weight into a dramatic role. But again, we'll go back to Ryan Gosling. Like he was amazing as Ken. Like that, yeah, like right. his performance, being able to play this ridiculous character with a straight face, with, with <laughs> humanity, with conviction, um, not to take anything away from Robert Downey Jr., but like that is, I find, to be more impressive than a dramatic role. I gotcha. Right, right, because Robert Downey Jr. was playing a serious character. You know, that is seems easy to mm-hmm. play, kind of, you know. Um, sure. A senator that's, yeah, yeah, good good point. Um, all right, two last things on the Oscar. John Cena, did you like the, the yeah, reenacting the streaker? Yeah, it's funny. funny. It's funny. And John Cena is, John Cena is, a, I think, an odd person. Yes, you I know, agree. He, we I listened agree. to him on quite... Howard Stern a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And, and and he seems genuine ish ish but like that's the thing like there's a genuineness but it almost it seems per- it's a little too scripted fairy tale it's sure. a little too everything that's gone wrong in my life was for a purpose and yeah. i've grown and it's a little just too yeah, it's uh, b- bullshitty. We'll say yeah, it just yeah. yeah. So I'm I I but yeah. he's got a new movie out on Amazon. We can watch right. uh, Ricky Snicky, <laughs> so we can try that. He's he's done well for himself. I mean, I'm not. He's a huge movie star mm-hmm. and a huge WWE star yep. and all these things. But there's something a little. Well, it's I think I think it's he's got a what is it? You call it like the penis chin, or like <laughs> like or you say he looks like a penis. Um, he does look like yep. he does look like a human penis. And then he obviously has uh, either hair plugs or a rug or something like that because oh the hair yeah. has become I mean oh my god the plugs yes yeah. um, did what it, a lot of people liked Jimmy Kimmel bringing back politics to it you know obviously Kimmel hates Trump um, which you know to how do you, me how do you figure. Way to get Trump reelected. Keep it up. <laughs> like I mean you you wait. I don't know what you all are gonna do. Yeah, I don't know what y'all are gonna. I, I mean, thought, I'm not voting for him, but I I'm just saying was, he's gonna it was win. A funny, so. It was a funny ad lib, and you know what? Like, uh, th- this could be a whole different conversation, but we are in such a weird political scenario in this country. Um, so, it's, oh, I, I hate it. it. It is to me. This feels like a moment in history. You know what it I'm is, saying? Like, it is. You know how they were marching towards World War II? Mm-hmm. It's just like I feel like we are. I don't know. I just feel like we are. Like, I, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know how it's a series of events? It just seems I'm terrified. Well, you can trace back. The one, many people do trace back to the point where uh, it was at a White House correspondence dinner. And I think it was Seth Meyers 
uh, it was 2012, had made a Donald Trump joke. Um, about him becoming president? No, just about oh. Donald Trump. And, and people make that the genesis of Trump's political launch. Um, oh, really? Yeah, so if you want to go back in time and fix something, there you go. The LA Times had an article about it, like bring the politics back to the show. And, mm -hmm. you know, at first I read that and I was like, oh. But then I thought, you know, mostly that crowd, I think it's pretty obvious, are liberal. Yeah. So it's like... And I don't know how many people really watch the Oscars anymore, even like you and I do. I think probably fewer and fewer people. So to me, it's like they are, that is their crowd. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Lean into politics. Yeah. Like you're, for the most part, you're reading your audience. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't, I didn't mind it. I don't, I don't mind it either. I think, because I think the rest of America is not watching. Yeah. Anyway. If the, the, the MAGA crowd is not no, watching the Oscars. I know, I know. But I mean, these uh, anyway, you know what? We'll move on because as we get closer to the election, I'll share all my. Oh, thoughts. we'll you, we'll have our we'll have our political discourse. <laughs> ah! Well, you better but you better sharpen up. Well, you better get every Wednesday. Honey, I win the debates that we talk about all the time, so you better brush up on your points. What? Save it for your stand. -up. I got. I, don't yeah. worry. Um, okay. Oh, wait, let me thank a sponsor, and then I want to ask you about if you th what you think is going on with Kate Middleton. Um, you guys, thank you for frequenting all my sponsors. It means so much, and One Skin is one of y'all's favorite. One Skin is an amazing skincare company that actually targets skin at the cellular level. Now, what does that mean? It means they have done the science and the research to invent a cream that goes deeper than skin level. They have their OSO1 shield. And it, what that ends up doing is replenishing your cells. So it's not just treating the top, like moisturizing those wrinkles. It's going deep. It's getting to the bottom of it. And it's helping you have better skin um, that looks more full, more healthy. And they have everything from eye creams to skincare. And right, uh, skin lo or your facial lotions, SPF, and more. You're getting a 15% discount. One Skin is the world's first skin longevity company by focusing on that cellular aspect of aging. One Skin keeps your skin looking and acting younger for longer. Get started today with 15% off using my code TSFS at oneskin.co. That's 15% off oneskin.co with the promo code TSFS. After you purchase, they'll ask where you heard about them. Please say the Sarah Fraser Show. New Year, healthier skin. That's One Skin. Skin, help your skin stay younger and healthier for longer with one skin. And I can tell you, Schman, I use, I actually genuinely use their products because they're fragrance free. Which why are I you, love. why are you just now telling me about this product? Because I, are you going to start a skincare? I'm, yeah, I might. Routine? I've, I've got some, you know, skin issues. This might, this might help solve it. Men actually use their products too. They're good for men. And you seem to look at me all the time. Like I'm younger and younger. So I think it's working. I think you're misconfusing. I think you're confusing the looks I'm giving you, but fair enough. <laughs> What do you think of Kate Middleton? Do you think Kate Middleton now has come out this morning and says she photoshopped? This is a rare, this is a very bizarre series of events. Let's step back. Okay. One, do you care about the Royals? Not really. No, I don't, I don't. Like, honestly, I don't. they are they are the original reality TV family. Um good point. And they are so I, I don't even think the English care about them anymore. But um at least most of the English people I know don't. But um, why don't you uh, recap for uh, the audience what, what the drama was this A weekend. month or so ago, she had abdominal surgery. Two which, months ago. <clears throat> two months ago. Okay. <laughs> well, Go you on. set it up. Listen, I prepped, I'm pre prepped to discuss here, so... Well, I am too, but you know, I mean, everybody like comes for me in the comments, like you don't know the details. I, I got them rough enough. What does two months versus a month mean? About thirty days, but go on. She ha so she hadn't been seen last week. There was a lot of pressure. It was like, mm -hmm. where was she? And this photo appeared of she and her mom in a Range Rover together, and people said that doesn't look like her. She's far away. So then they put out this photo that very recently of Kate with her three kids. I got a problem with this to begin with. Because if you've had abdominal surgery and you're supposedly healthy and bouncing back, why are you sitting? This should have been standing. I've got, a, I've got a problem with it right there. If this <clears throat> isn't as serious, and, and we don't know what the abdominal thing was. At sure. first, I thought it was a tummy tuck. Tummy tucks take a long time to recover from. Very long. They can be very, very painful, very difficult. Still could be a tummy tuck. But they made it sound like it wasn't cosmetic. She just had this ab surgery. Yada, yada. So I have a problem with her sitting. But then... 
in a historic event, the AP and these other news outlets retracted the photo of Kate and her three kids. And they said it is clearly photoshopped. And they marked all the places. The sleeves were off. She's not wedding, wearing her wedding ring. People even looked at the sweater and they believe, because people track everything mm-hmm. she wears, that the, this photo was from November of okay. 2023. And they actually just dot, they like changed the color of the sweater. Okay, so major credible news outlets say, we're not posting this anymore. And then she came out this morning and she said, well, like any amateur photographer, yes, I touched up my photos and I didn't quite get them right. Um, Will took it. That's why he's not in it. I, that will lead me to my other theory. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> because if you're if things are so good and you're fine, you should be standing and where's your husband? You have well, what if the surgery was so successful that now she can squat and and sit? So, what do you, what's your theory? And this has sparked tons of conspiracy theories. Sure. When she came out with this statement, was this a written statement or a yes, a written statement? And she signed it C, okay. which also people find weird because it's Catherine. How about with a K? How about or Kate um, Middle Catherine? How you know. about um, I'll believe it when she is showing a, a today's newspaper. <laughs> Like a hostage, uh, I need proof of life. Um, I can tell you right now what's going on. Can we? Can we just know? We know that the royal family is jacked up. Um, you, we, we've gotten a glimpse with the the drama with uh, Meghan and Harry, and you see, you know, you, you've seen certain things exposed or at least dramatized in the in the uh, was it the royals on Netflix. Um, it's all, it's all, they're all jacked up. They, they can't get out of their own way and they are a, um, they're a mess. So there you go. Um, it was signed with a C for Catherine following, um, well, is her God given name Catherine yeah, with a C? Yeah, it, it okay. must be. Um, but I, look, this is what's going on. There's no conspiracy. These two are 100% having marital issues. A thousand percent. A hundred percent or a thousand percent? A thousand. I went from a hundred to a thousand. Wow. These two are are absolutely having marital issues. They haven't been spotted together. You haven't seen her. They are trying to, I bet, I bet they are not living together. You know, which there, is was why that, there was that picture of um, Will hitting on some of the uh, actresses at the uh, Golden Globes. You know? Well, there have been lots of rumors about him, and they broke up when they were dating in um, Scotland, when they were at school at St. Andrews together. Mm. I went up there to visit my college roommate, and we were trying to stalk them um, because he was out and about with other women. Now, today, they were also, Will and Kate were, were seen in a car riding together. They were going to different appointments. Well, of course, they're, uh, there's, they are, things are not good in that marriage, I guarantee you. Talk about a sliding doors moment. What if you had actually got to him in Scotland? Like, what your, like you could have been you know, the Duchess of whatever. Um, and our paths oh God, would not have imagine? our paths. I'd be sitting here hosting a podcast talking about your tummy talk. No, I don't want that life. No okay. way. I mean, the only part that I do agree with in Bank of Markle, I'm indifferent on. I, I I don't dislike her. I don't like her. I don't really care to follow her either because I don't think there's a, I, there's nothing there. I don't write. There's nothing interesting there mm-hmm. to me. So I don't dislike her. I don't, you know, Harry's the most interesting to me because he seems like he was super fun to party with. The I actually like that he served in the military. Sure. Like he seems like kind of a com- more compelling individual. Anyway, the part I uh, with Meghan Markle, I'm I think she's right. I'm sure it's very hard. Kate Middleton was born and bred for that life. That's a whole different. Sure, but it's hard to be an American in that life. It never works. So it never would have worked. And I'll tell you, my I mean, I'm from Irish descent. The Irish hate. Mm, yeah, that they would, hated it would, the old it would never have they, worked out for that. They told me forever. They've never liked the royal family. They hate it. And they always say the English. I mean, not now, but back then, you know, the English and the Irish. Well, there's still might some. Be. I'm sure there's still some. Yeah, we yeah, didn't always get on, you know. So they always thought, oh, you don't ever want to be a part of that royal family. Awful. Yeah, you dodged Awful. a bullet. They're inbred and you want nothing to do mm-hmm. with them. So there you go. Okay. Um, all right. Well, anyway, I can tell you right now, they're they're trying to work out their marriage is what's going on. All right. You heard it here first. Uh, I want to do an email. You got, we got some <clears throat> schman mail. And I want your, uh, I want to, first of all, give this man credit. One, because he's a man listening to the show. You, you That's the thing. You you do a great job for my male audience. You well, really attract the dudes. I'm glad to uh, bring in a different demographic. 
I don't know if this gentleman wants his name out there, so I will not say that. But Why he says, we just, yeah, we can just call him Jay. Hi, Sarah. First, I'll start by saying Fox 5's Like It or Not is most definitely not the same without you. Thank you, Jay. I appreciate that. Second, I just want to congratulate you for not being married to a douche. Seriously, you deserve a pat on the back for that because I believe that many women as accomplished as you, and particularly in your professional realm, would gravitate in that direction. You obviously had some temptation with a rich guy in Northwest D.C., but you made a wise choice 100% true story when I first went to your Instagram a couple of years ago and saw a video with Schmam I was absolutely bracing myself for the worst possible douchebag but was pleasantly surprised and remember thinking wow he's actually cool and funny so on that note I enjoyed your last show with him I admittedly do not listen to you on a regular basis, but do enjoy your personal shows on Tuesday. I'm probably not the right demographic for most of the reality TV stuff. No offense. And if you ever bring Schman back on the show, I was thinking of a few topics I would like for him to discuss. I will not be offended if you throw this in the trash can, but here they are. Number one. Does Schman maintain a spreadsheet where he tracks Sarah Fraser revenue streams and expenses? Uh, I do not maintain a spreadsheet for that specific uh, responsibility because you run your own business. Thank I, you. Uh, you know, I provide some guidance and, and feedback and you pick my brain on things. But I do have a spreadsheet of our household expenses <laughs> that I maintain on a monthly basis, um, but not for the Sarah Fraser show. You do. You do. Our, you do love a spreadsheet and you have trained me over the years. I, I now have a spreadsheet for my own expenses. Wow. It's difficult because that's not my forte. That no, is we really, all have strengths. That is really mm-hmm. yours. But you know every expense in our household. Yep. We live and- in Los Angeles, so <laughs> need to keep track of this stuff. Oh, please. We're manifesting a grand mm-hmm. life. Stop. You can't. I don't want to hear any scarcity talk. Only more. 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 Money flows Let's, easily. Yes. More and yes. more and more. And our Beverly Hills home is coming, or Bel Air, or the Palisades. I'm not sure yet. I kind of like the Palisades. Let's leave all like our options open. Um, number two, if he were given a hypothetical hall pass, who would he choose? Does Sarah approve of this choice? <laughs> I think we wow. know who it is today. But well, yeah. hold on. It's it's not Ryan Gosling or Paul Rudd, but, I mean. <laughs> it's not? If they were next door, it'd be like, hey, want to <laughs> come over and oh God, play tummy I, sticks? I, I really I like, hope. all right. Um, I hope my future is catching you and Ryan Gosling. That would be something. Like, like if you just pulled a ditty, like that would be. That would be something. <laughs> uh, you know, hall pass. Um, see, like I, if we're talking um, celebrities, you know, like I like uh, Jennifer Lawrence. I think she's attractive. Okay. I think she's got a good personality. I like, uh, what's her face? Um, uh, hold on. I'll look her up for a second. Dame Helen Mirren. Um, she's not. She's got something about her. Um, she's she's got it for an older older broad. Um, Melania Trump. No, 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 no. Um, hold on, I'll tell you. I'm, I'm drawing uh, a blank. And I'm I'm just. Oh, okay. Charlize Theron. Um, okay. But because uh, you like a little bit of an older fox too. Well, you know your your tastes tend to change. Like I could say like a Cindy Sweeney, but she's like what she was twenty what five? Yeah, we got nothing. In I like that about you. You actually enjoy an older woman because bef- the woman you were dating before me was what 10, 11 years old. Mm, she was a little, a little bit older. You and I have uh, an affinity for the older. Well, we we like we like fine wines. Uh, what I should know. say though, like from a like a pure statistical probability uh chances I, I should pick like the woman who lives down the street as my hall pass because that would be like the <laughs> one that you could actually could actually attain um but no well, women i have do... one woman i have one woman and it's you well that's only because you're overwhelmed with that's the only reason <laughs> God, I'm sorry, continue. It's the only reason because i ask <clears throat> you all the time are you attracted do you, do other women hit on you and like I think you're just so overwhelmed with my stuff and KJ. Like I don't even think you pay attention to women. I that might are have interested. just become desensitized to it because it happens so often. All right. Well, mm-hmm. anyhow, number three: If Schman were the program director for the Sarah Fraser show, what changes would he implement? What would he like to hear more and less of? Uh, you know that that's uh, be brutal. Well, that's I don't. Well, the thing is, I don't listen to your show. You told you banned <sighs> me from listening, so I respect your wishes. Um, okay, well, back when you listened a couple of years ago, I I don't know. I think you've got a good recipe right now. You know, just uh, keep pushing the envelope, keep getting good guests, keep breaking news. Um, that's it. Do you enjoy David Yanta? He's a he's a trip. <laughs> 
I love my David. Yeah, he's he's. Would you would if you were the program director? Would you say hell? Oh, you can back off, David. I, it's more about the you know the all the phone calls with David <laughs> off air. But I love the guy to death. He he brings he has he has a a passion for the business. He does he does have a passion for the business. Mm-hmm. That's a good way to say it. Uh, well, anything you would like to hear more of? Anything you want to hear more of? More more talk about us? Probably not. But why? Because I live my uh, I like to live in the. Um, Oh, behind the scenes. No, put it out there. Put it all out. We we should do you, a reality you, How come show. when you say put it all out there, you look down on my crotch? Um. Well, first of all, I would love to see you pull a John Cena. Mm-hmm. That'd be so hot. I'm very attracted to you. You're so fine. No, thank but you. I think our dynamic is so good. I think we should do a reality show because we, the older we get, actually, the more, I hope this works long term, but we have different political views. We spar, but then mm-hmm. we like make out. You know what I mean? It's a hot combo. I yeah, I'm, that's, uh, I'm sure there's a market for it. <laughs> Last question. After waking up each morning, how long does it take on average before he pinches himself and says, oh, my God, I'm married to Sarah Frazier? I want I mean, to know this. It's probably the, the official answer is it's instantaneous. Like my eyes wake up and then that's what happens. It's usually after the second cup of coffee and maybe after I've had breakfast and I can reflect. <laughs> okay. Do you, I tell you all the time how grateful. I am. I'm grateful for you. Like, I could never live my life without you. Ever. I, and I tell you all the time, and I pray to God, I say, God, you cannot let him go until he's like 75. Mm-hmm. I love how you put a cap at 75 and then I'm out. Well, after 70, you know, I don't care. Then it's like, I think we should okay. do the villages. We should, like, you know, live our lives because our kids will only be like 22. But still, they'll at least be independent. I think your math is a little off, but. Well, we still have like two more kids to go. We want oh, three fair enough. children. Okay. Yeah. And then yeah, it's off to the villages, and you can, you can. Uh, okay, they'll be f- almost you close can, to thirty. Uh, be like uh, welcoming, like the sailors are coming into town, and uh, I'll be getting high off my ass and doing Pilates or yoga. Uh, that's all for now. By the way, I have to delete some of my Google search history, including what does a y'all sexual mean, and is Jessica Simpson's dad gay? Well, definitely Joe Simpson is gay, 110%. And y'all sexual, as we discussed, is a guy, a Southern mm-hmm. gentleman who says he's straight, but Listen, a little y'all. Listen, everyone needs to live their lives and do what do what makes them happy. Well, you're the gayest straight guy I know. I, anyway, you love a show tune. You, and you've do. got more male crushes. I mean, you could rattle off five men you'd love to hook up with. And you, you struggle it's not, it's not to find up. two. I want to have fellowship and, and hang out. And uh, I respect their, their craft. I respect their ability. Mm-hmm. Just as the women too, I respect Jennifer Lawrence, like the way she went full frontal in that mo- in that film. <laughs> I fully respect that, and I think she should do more of that. And I will say, the men that you hang out with, I love your guy friends. But I mean, you have some guy friends; they're somewhat indifferent on women. I mean, they're straight, but they're they're not like like thrilled about women. <laughs> can, you, can you blame them? <laughs> yes. Okay. I love a man. There's very few men I don't meet that I, I that, that, that's my weakness. I mm-hmm. do. I'm very attracted to, and don't even, don't get me in the room with an older rich guy. It's just awful. Watch out, Bill Maher. I, that's my dream man, mm-hmm. aside from you. It's one of the reasons I haven't gotten you tickets to the show yet, because I feel like you'll be <laughs> backstage rubbing your hand through that hair, oh, hair those, that hair piece. Yeah, I'd hair be piece. unsnapping that mm-hmm. hair piece and just, <laughs> oh my God. All right. Um, okay, wait. Oh, that was it. That was, that it. was all it. All right. All right. All right. Shman, thanks for joining. Well, thanks for having me on. You have no social media. Nobody can find you. And um, I think we I think we have to do this every week. We have so many relationship topics. We have so many life well, things. Well, you know, if uh, the viewers know how to reach us and uh, send your send your messages via email or uh, what you want to talk message, about. Sure. We can uh, we can keep this gravy train rolling. OK. And we got to do our reality show because one of the things we've talked about for a decade because we've been together like 11 years, but mm-hmm. married decade almost of destruction. We've always said that we're going to go shoot guns together. Yeah, we got to do and that. We I you guys, I have never seen him do anything really that masculine. So this is like this is going to be. You saw me assemble a desk. <laughs> You did do an incredible yeah, job. Thanks. I will say this. You really, like, you can be handy. Mm-hmm. You don't usually do it, but when you, you you got in there with this uplift desk, you really. Yeah, thank you for the credit. No, you, and there is, I, you give a masculine, you do. Like mm-hmm. I always say, there's something manly. You got a musk. There's a guy, there's mm-hmm. a, you do have a musk, mm-hmm. too. There's a man's man <laughs> kind of about you. All right, bye, everybody. Bye.